Gospel of John, chapter 20. Okay. Dira kita sa chapter 20, verses 1 to 18. May request all of you to please stand as we read our passage for this afternoon. No? There is a John chapter 20, verses 1 to 18. Let me read, if you have your Bibles with you, please follow with your eyes. John chapter 20, verses 1 to 18. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark. She saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she went running to Simon Peter and to the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said to them, They've taken the Lord out of the tomb. And we don't know where they've put him. At that, Peter and the other disciple went out heading for the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and got to the tomb first. Stooping down, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then following him, Simon Peter also came. He entered the tomb and saw the linen cloths lying there. The wrapping that had been on his head was not lying with the linen cloths, but was folded up in a separate place by itself. The other disciple who had reached the tomb first, then also went in, saw, and believed. That's a very important point. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to the place where they were staying. Okay, verse 11, John chapter 20. But Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she was crying, she stooped to look into the tomb. She saw two angels in white sitting where Jesus' body had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you crying? Because they've taken away my Lord, she told them. And I don't know where they've put him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Verse 15. Woman, Jesus said to her, Why are you crying? Who is it that you are seeking? Supposing he was the gardener, she replied, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've put him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, Turning around, she said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Don't cling to me, Jesus told her, since I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them that I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them what he had said to her. This is God's word. Please be seated. Okay. So actually, ang atong mensahe is about the resurrection. This is about the momentous event of Jesus Christ rising from the dead. Ang problema, kaya ang mga disciples at the time, they were very much discouraged kaya itong teaching ni Jesus Christ sa una, sa bago siya naging crucified, doon wala din nagsunod sila minds, no? Inhambala na na sila ni Jesus na, you know, I will die. After three days, I will rise from the dead. But the problem is, it did not sink in. And the reason for that, I'll just mention it, kaila ay nabi ang ila idea of a Messiah. Abi nila, ang Messiah is someone who will liberate them from the bondage to Rome. So they thought that the Messiah was a political and military Messiah. It was only later on na mas greater pagalik ang matutuod ng Messiah. Because the, great, because the true Messiah, Jesus Christ, does not simply liberate us from bondage to political authority. He liberates us and saves us from our sin. Which is the more important problem. Because sin causes ikaw ng death. Wala na nila na yung So, when ang atong imbasa is about three particular disciples who went to the empty tomb and who at first, wala din nila na grasp na this is it. This is the fulfillment 
of what Jesus taught us. Nga He will rise from the dead. They missed the significance of the empty tomb. But later on, through God's grace, and because Jesus also appeared to all of them, they understood, ah, to do what there is victory in Jesus. He rose from the dead. Okay. Ang mensahe na ito is entitled, Encounters at the Empty Tomb. I will be focusing on the experience of these three disciples nga ginbasa na ito kagina. Who are they? Peter, John, and Mary Magdalene. And through their example, I hope that we will learn lessons about how to live the Christian life. We will learn something about what kind of Christians we ought to be. Kaysa examples na ginpakita nila dari sa John chapter 20, we find both strengths and weaknesses. Okay? I point out na. So, kagina nabasa natin about Peter, he ran, he rushed into the tomb. Pero, ang natabog daw, wala, wala itig sink in. So, even though this was a triumphant event, he did not benefit spiritually from it because he missed the significance of the empty tomb. That's a weakness. Nga tagaan ko na, I will, I will say something about that later on. Nga is apitang mga Christians, we are like that. Grabe na gali ang victory sa ginoo, which is happening all around us. Wala lang na ito nahagpan because we lack faith and we lack the understanding to grasp that God gali is working powerfully. Okay? Number two, si John. Okay? Si John naman niya, he was different. Because ang bagdiri sa gimpasa naton, he saw the linen clothes and he understood. And because of that, he believed. And I believe na because my because that event made him to believe and resulted in faith in his heart, he had peace. Okay? May, may verse na na naghahambal nga, uh, he will keep in perfect peace those who trust the Lord. So instead of that event being a tragedy, si, I believe na si Janya, Kampante siya. This is what the Lord promised. He will rise from the dead. So, if ano may difference in reaction, they saw the same things. Both Peter and John saw the same things. But they reacted differently. But there are, may application that para sa ton. His ah, something happens to us. Pero ang interpretation sa isa, lain. He is depressed by what he sees. Ang isa naman niya, confident. Because he sees that God is working. And so, that is something we will learn, no? As we go along. And then finally, I will talk about Mary, no? The disciple who cried, nagibig siya, but, uh, ari grabe ah, let me say something about Mary. Dili sa gimbasa na ton, Mary was crying, but she was given the privilege of being the first one to see the risen Lord. That, may, that is very important, and I will say something about that in a little while. Okay. Hindi ko na lang pag-reviewon ang, or maybe I should, reviewon taliwat ang ginbasa ka. Ano ang natabo? Kundi in-crucify si Jesus Christ, napatay siya, ginlubong siya. Then on the first day of the week, Sunday, Easter, nagkagto si Mary ito sa tomb. Okay. Actually, it was not only Mary. May tungod sa ibang ng mga gospel accounts, you will read that there were other women with her. Pero it would appear na siya to ang una na nakalampot dito sa tomb ni Jesus. And the stone was rolled away, the tomb was empty, pero sa nakitaan to ni Mary, na apektuhan din siya. Kaya sa mind niya, yeah, wala man siya yung expectar na mapanaw si Jesus mo. So, ang, sa nakitaan niya ni empty ang tomb, ang nagsulod niya sa una-una niya, yeah, they have stolen, someone stole the body of the Lord. So, nag- Nagdalagan siya, she went to John and Peter and informed them, they have stolen the, the, the body of our Lord. Ito ato yung duha, dalagan man sila sa tomb. Okay, and, and there is a pinbasa na ito, dungan man sila lakat, dungan man sila dalagan, pero una nga nakalambot si John the Beloved, the other disciple, the disciple whom Jesus loved. Kaghambal sa iba ng mga scholars, Possibly, nga nauna si John, kay tungod, he was younger and stronger. But we do not really know. Okay? The point is, pag uh, abot yan ni John, nagtulog siya, wala siya na yung nagsulod, 
he saw the linen clothes, ginulat niya, alay niya maklambot si Peter, pagabot ni Peter, sulot si Peter, okay? He also saw what John saw, and that is when John also went into the tomb, pagdirak nun nagsulot ang different reactions nila, which I mentioned a while ago. Si Peter niya, when he saw the empty tomb, and the tomb lang mga clothing, strips of clothing, nga, nga nabilin to sa tomb, Si Peter ya, he was amazed. He could not understand what was happening. Si John ya, ano, he believed. Hambal din sa basa ta, basa ta. He saw and he believed. And then si Mary will come to her. Three points lang ang akong i-share this afternoon. Number one, Peter the impulsive disciple. Impulsive, tandaan ka na. Number two, we have John the reflective disciple na hindi siya niya harara nagtalagan siya pero paglambot niya sa to natungkat siya na eh naminsan siya na eh anong bot sa lingon sila eh so he is the thoughtful and reflective disciple and finally Mary and I will what is this give much time to expounding on the example of Mary the loving disciple kay tungod Dira sa ginbasa naton, makitang tagigya ang tagipusukon ni Mary that she was someone who really loved the Lord. Sa tatlo ni tatawo na ini, their examples, I hope we will learn something that we will have to change in our Christian life and that will inspire us if there are some good things there na makita natin sila example, it will inspire us to also imitate those good things. Avoid the bad, imitate the good. Okay. So, kato kita kay Peter. Anong mahambal ta kay Peter? Based ni sa gimbasa ta. Ang mahambal ko, impulsive din siya. Ya. Siya ang klase sang tao nga ina lang gara-gara lang pero wala ka paminsar. He is the kind of person who just crashes in without really thinking about what is happening. Now, gaan ko kumusta mga examples, ha? Hindi ko na lang pagbasahon ang mga verses. But if you remember, uh, I believe many of you nagabasa mga gitsan inyo Bibles and you can remember these stories. Natungduman nyo sang gintransfigure ang atong ginoo that uh, I think it was Elijah and Moses who appeared with Jesus and then he was transfigured. Then si Peter... You know, very impulsive. He did not know what to say. He just blurted out, Lord, may mo sa di sang tatlo ka tents para sa inyo tatlo. That's all, nagunti lang naghambal. There was a voice from heaven. Uh, this is my beloved son. Hear ye him. As if the Lord is saying, hindi sa di hambal, pamati ka mo ya sa iya. Okay. That's one example of Peter's impulsiveness. He tends to blurt out to just speak without without thinking. Ipakita ko karon sa inyo kung anong disadvantage sini as applied to our Christian lives and even to the church. Ano pag ina example yung madumduman ta sa pagka-impulsive ni Peter? Do you remember itong paglakat ni Jesus sa water na natibot ang mga disipulo? And when Peter realized that it was Jesus who was walking on the water, nag-volunteer siya, Lord, ako man, malakat man ko sa tubig. And what happened? Okay, naglakat siya. Hindi, daw ka namin, no? Lakat man siya sa tubig. But the problem was, he took his eyes off Jesus and he began to look at the waves. Nakuan siya, naapektuhan siya sa circumstances. Kadali lang to, dali niya sa pagtulog niya kay Jesus. Wala na yan, nasustirin na niya pagtuo. Eh, no, nakapo. Kaya he now allowed himself to be swayed by circumstances instead of fixing his eyes on Jesus. Kundi lumubog siya. <laughs> Lord, save me. O, ti mayo lang kaya ras Jesus. Ginsalbar siya. But what did the Lord rebuke him? How did the Lord rebuke him? Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Amo na si Peter, hara-hara. Impulsive. Pero hindi masustiner. Gaso good lang, Pero hindi masustihin. That's the problem with impulsiveness. Okay, anong pagit? Damo, pagit eh. Anong pagit? Ba't yung duman nyo itong uh, si Jesus Christ nagtudlo parte sa iya death and resurrection? That the Lord, that 
he he thought about the fact that he will be what is this uh, killed, no? Ano mali Peter? Kinrepute niya yun, you know? Imagine the audacity of that disciple. Master mo, i-rebuke mo. Lord, this will never happen to you. Ayan ang ginihok ni Jesus. Get me behind me, Satan. You do not treasure the things of God. You treasure the things of men. You are a hindrance to me. Na, ina siya, although this is medyo out of topic, that is an important consideration for us to understand why Peter was like that. Tumot ang una, una niya. Ang problema niya, because he was, not, he was not a person given to thinking and to reflection, dahil siya niya madala sa outside world, sa circumstansya, and, and finally, ang pag-impulsive ni Peter, na kasubog din, you of course remember that Peter denied the Lord how many times? Three times. You know, si Peter, palangdaan niya na si Jesus, I do not believe that he did not love the Lord. He loved the Lord. Ang problema sa iya, he was not firm. Da wala siya, backbone lang. Why? Why? Dali siya madalas ang circumstansya. Dali siya madalas ang iya palibot. Because he was impulsive. Because he was not a person na nagapaminsan, gid bala, kag ang mga bukang na ginapaminsaran, wala gid maabsorb, kag nang infirm conviction sa iya na gito soon. And that is the problem with O, oh, kanto na kita sa application. Ginmensyonar ko tanitanan because this is a problem with many Christians. Bisan sa akon. Gakadala kita sa circumstansya. Gakadala kita sa, what do you, how, how do you say this? The excitement of the moment because we are more interested in our feelings than in thinking. Ano ba ito sa I think you cannot deny that many Christians, ang importante para sila is excitement, feeling good, feeling happy. Pero kung may teaching na sa kung, kung ang manugwali magtudlo about about doctrine, about mga deep truths of the Bible, kapwa na, void na kagakatulugan. Ang favorite part nila, which is of course a good part, of the worship, sir, wala kong gambal na yun. This is a very good part. The praise and worship, especially kung akong update nga, I think it feels good. No? Kagang namian nila nga wali is, you know, ay lang wali, the Lord will surely bless you. You will be successful. You will be rich. You will be healthy. And, uh, pero kung ang kuhan, kung ang wali is, repent and lament. And uh, ilang lang mga medyo negative na ga-atras na sila. <laughs> Hindi nila gusto kagungang wali, mga doktrinal na. Ilang lang mga dalom na ganyan. If the, if, the, if the preaching is about, for example, let us say, about holiness, about the Trinity. Ano man din labot ko sa, sa Trinity? That is not uh, very important. If the, if the teaching is about, as I said, deep things about the truths of God, hindi na sila. They, they are more preoccupied with feelings, feeling good, feeling happy, than about really thinking and reflecting on the truths of God's Word. Ka good line na. I have to tell you this, my brothers and sisters, that's a problem. Kung ang konsepto mo sa Christian life is just about feelings, especially feeling excited and feeling happy, you will not become a firm and steadfast believer. Ang huwa mo, you will be the kind of Christian nga hapos lang madala sa sirkomstansya. Kung di in mali pa yun, dito ka! Kaya hindi mo ginapagaan priority, hindi mo yung feelings mo. But you know what? The Christian life is not, is not about, ultimately, ah, it's not about excitement and feelings. It's about the truth. And truth is something that you study. It is something that you think about. If you do not absorb the truth, hindi ka mangin mabakod, and you will not really grow as a Christian. You will not become a firm believer. You will not become a steadfast Christian. Nga may conviction ba lang? Nga bisan, bisan matintar, kasi hindi mo palibot, wala kagakadala. 
because you took the time to study and to think, amuli ka lang hinahambas ang ginoo. You have absorbed it. It has become a firm conviction. You are strong to resist the temptations of the world. Kung paano yung punto ko? That, that's why, hindi pa lang doctrine, truth, teaching, tag-study, importante na sa Christian life. This is not all about just dancing and singing and clapping. Well, it's part of it. Wala akong manginambal na hindi inayabahin sa Christian life. But, I, but I'm saying, truth is important, study is important, thinking is important, reflecting is important so that you can form firm convictions and become a steadfast Christian na hindi niya madala sa excitement of the circumstances. So, lang tawa to si P.C. Peter. <laughs> Grabe siya. Naglain lang ang iya circumstansya, naglain lang ang iya environment, ginahambalan lang ito siya sa bayo ito, no? Na, you're one of them! Hindi, I don't know him! What happened? Nadala sa tribot. Because he was a person who was easily swayed by his immediate environment. Wala sa internal strength pala. Wala internal strength. Yung internal strength na iya can only be formed by really thinking and studying God's Word. Mahatag lang ko sa mga na, sang isa ka importante na verse. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 15. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 15. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm. Oh, that's what we want. We want Christians who are firm and who have convictions and who are strong and mature. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold to the traditions you were taught whether by what we said or what we wrote. In other words, nga affirm sila. You want to become a strong Christian? You want to become a Christian with firm convictions? How do you become like that? Ang baldiris rin basa ta, they held on to the traditions that they were taught. In other words, ang mga napatian nila, kag nabasahan nila sa Bible, di pa minsaran git nila ya. They took teaching seriously. Ang ginatudlo bila sila, They took it seriously. That is why they became strong Christians. Okay? So, there are among the quotas example ni Peter. There's an example there which we should avoid and not follow. Learn to be a thinking Christian. Okay? Avoid avoid being, you know, avoid emotionalism. I'm not saying ah, wala na wala again. Pero I'm saying na kung emotionalism lang ang emo Christian life, at eh, madala, padala-dala ka lang eh, kung anong circumstansya. Whatever feels good and wonderful, di, dira ka. But you will never become a firm believer. Okay, number two. The thoughtful and reflective Christian. Si John. Okay, balik kita sa John chapter 20. Anong mabasahan tada, brothers and sisters? Dira sa John chapter 20, hambal dira, si John, nakitaan niya ang mga linen cloths. Kundi si Jesus Christ, nabanhaw, wala na to. Pero nabilin itong mga cloth, strips of clothing. Kagsang nakitaan ko ni John, unang lipat, pag kumalipat, wala siya anay, nagsunod. Nag-post siya anay. Amo nang namin kay John. Nagauntat siya, nag-take time to think siya. Take time to reflect. Hindi siya yung parihas ni, ni Peter na rush in, hara-hara, sulod na yun. Siya yung naminsar. Nag-pause hanay, kag naminsar. Anong buot si Limon Sini? Nabilin ang mga clothing? Wala na disturb? Paano na matabo? Kung ginkawat ni ang lawas ni Jesus Christ, kami hindi amuni ang plastada sa mga clothing? Kahit kung ginpawat ni, kaya ginapanghaboy na ni, kaganilaktan na ni. Pero wala. Ara ang mga ang mga clothing. Insakto ang plastada. The clothings were not disturbed. Which means, anong conclusion ni John? Kahit tungod na minsar siya. Ah, he believed. Nadungduman niya ang inhambal ni Jesus na he will rise from the dead. And he believed. Kunti nagbakod ang iya espiritu. Okay. So what is the point? He believed and he became strong in his spirit, in his heart, because he took time to think what this meant. Anong application sa mga, sa aton mga utod ko? 
take time to really meditate on the Word of God. Hindi na yung madala sa ginbasa mo lang. Nagbasa ka lang Bible, kasi nang ginapangita mo yan nga, nga basahon ko na yun para mangin peaceful ang feeling ko. That, that's, that's not how to... Di ba lang magbasa sa Bible, usually, amula ang aton goal, amuta na yung magbasa sa Bible, basahon ko na kay inspiring ni. Eh. Kung medyo hindi inspiring, hindi lang na yan. Doon ka delikado. <laughs> delikado siya na. Tiliyon ko lang yan ang versikulo nga medyo ma-inspired ako ng magnali pa matiyag ko. No. When you study the Word of God, it's not about feeling good. Of course, the Lord will bless you and the Lord will will give peace to your hearts. Pero first of all, learn to reflect and understand. Kanami iya kay John. Kung magbasa ka bila sa hiniging John chapter 20, ang pamangkot ko sa inyo, eh, please notice this. Nga ano obserbaran nyo man to? Ginfulat. Mga dit, ini mga gagmay lang nga detalye, pero very important. Na nakakitaan niya. Ginmensyonar na kita. O ang mga clothings, ato, ato pa to. Wala na tandog. Dason to yung wrapping sa ulo, ato to yung saigad. Full dead. Dason, ang isa ka ang hen, diriya sa... Na, ang, ang isa ka ang hen, ari diriya sa uluhan. Ang isa ya, ato, ato to yung sa tiilan. Basi mo mangkot ka mo, anong importansya sila? Mga, te, dimensyonar niya yung detalye. So what? Buot sa lingon, observant di siya ya. You, you get what I'm trying to say? In other words, careful di siya ya sa pag-observe kag sa pag-reflect. Amo na nga, nagtubo ang pagturo niya because he takes time to observe and to think and to reflect and to meditate. In, ang Christian life, ang pag-grow sa Christian life, hindi may madala sa hapaw-hapaw lang. Nga, nakabati ka ng sermon, nakabasa ka lang, pero wala ka man na malandong, wala ka man nag-meditate, wala bugit din paminsaran pag nangamuyo, Lord, give me understanding. So, kundi, pabilin ka, nga stunted yung emo Christian growth. So, ano, ano nga ako na encouragement sa aton? Number one, Mag, kung may manugwal eh, pamati again. O oh, diba? That's one practical application. Hindi sila nga nga, nga hula, tawon mo lang nga magsinggit ang manugwal eh, para ako, oh, bugtaw na ako. Hindi, 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 hula. Ang, ang importante yan, ang words of God, ang, 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 ang content. Okay, magbasa ka sa Bible, it's not just Bible reading, ang ambal, lang to, lang ambal sa Bible, how I love to meditate on your word, day and night, Kapano ka ito ng boots lingon sa meditate? Ang boots lingon, daw, ang boots lingon sa meditate, daw parehas na siya sa baka, nga inablang ang hilamon, ginausan, dasun ginabalik-balik. Hindi niya siling niya nga kaunon mo, tudlo mo tayon. That will not really, that will not really give you the nutrients that you need. Study it deeply. And isa pagit nga akong, uh, what's this? advice para sa puntanan. Learn to read good Christian books. Ini, kuwan ko ni, nang this is something I would like to promote. Kanina si, si, nagambal si Bon sa akong kagina, eh, may napatian kami nga uh, message nga amun na yung punto, nga do not lay up treasures here on earth. Hambal niya, hambal niya sa akong, hala, hindi ka mag lay up treasures sa books, ka collection sa books. Here on earth, kaya ang balsang Bible, do not lay up treasures. Hindi mo man ako madala sa langit. Alam mo ko nung sabat ko? Hindi ah. Madala ko ginaya sa langit. Hindi ko madala ang physical aspects ng libro. Pero ang unod, madala ko ginaya. So masigi ko yung bakal libro. <laughs> but, but, okay. So that's one advice. Finally, kagto kita, okay, to la pa na po 30 minutes. Okay. Kagto kita kay Mary. Anong mahambal ka sa kay Mary? Katingalahan. Kung basahon mo ang John chapter 20, the first thing you will notice is that si Mary Magdalin lang ang ginmensyonar ni John among the women who went to the tomb. Pero di ba lang may mga upod to siya? Are you following my brothers and sisters? Kung magbasa ka mo sa parallel gospel accounts sa Matthew, Mark, and Luke, mabasahan mo that Mary was not the only one who went to the tomb. Pero diriya sa John, ang ginmensyonar lang ni John is Mary Magdalene. Nga ah. 
I believe, I believe that John did that. Kaku kami sa mga musiliri, hindi mangi siya importante sa early church. Wala man to siya position. Hindi man siya apostle. Hindi man siya sa Sunday school teacher or whatever. Pero hinahagang git siya yas ang dako nga honor ni John nga inang chapter nena was about her. I- iya lang yung alang din mentioner. Hindi na tong ibanto ng mga bayi. The question is why? I believe it was because John was really impressed by the love of Mary for Jesus. Kag, ang mabal ko lang, the greatest is love. Di saan pa nga si Neil, okay, ipakita ko alay sinyo ang mga evidences na nakahambal kita nga si Mary was really a loving disciple. Kaya kundi kagina, impulsive disciple, reflective disciple, subog naman, loving disciple. Nga makahambal kita nga si Mary was really a person who deeply loved the Lord. Hambal sa isa kapagentator sa John chapter 19, sa, ang, sa mga bayi na atuto sa cross, nagatindog, stand at the cross, Mary's name was mentioned last. As if to say, as if to say, nga siya ang nagpabilin. Siya ang pinakaulihi nga nagpabilin to sa tubangan sa cross ni Jesus. Then in John chapter 20, she was the first who arrived at the tomb. Last at the cross, first at the tomb. Pagkatapos, siya pa ya, dito sa empty tomb, siya man ang pinakaulihi. Because naghalin na to ya si Peter, ikaw si John, si Mary, at Tuman Tugyakon. And also, please note, nga hambal diri sa atong ginbasa, nga sang na-realize ni Mary, nga si Jesus tugali ang gardener nga abi niya gardener what did she do she clung to him hindi niya pagbuyan nga in fact napilitan si Jesus magapal do not cling to me i have not yet ascended to my father boy iko boy iko may chimpo we may still have time to be all together then 40 days pa man after nga ma-ascend ko ya to the father don't let me go don't Don't hold on to me as if nga madula na ko yung ulti. No. Okay? Amo na ang mga hints, clues, or evidences na grabe yung pagpalangga ni Mary sa King Jesus. And that is why I believe din tagaan di just special mention ni Apostle John si Mary diri sa iya gospel. Pero ang pamangkot sa buong amoy ni nga ah palangga din ni Mary si Jesus. And I believe the answer can be found okay, in Luke chapter 7, verse 47. Kung magkato ka sa Luke chapter 7, verse 47, aring mabasa mo. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven. That's why she loved much. But the one who is forgiven little, loves little. I believe amuni. Dapati ko nga amuni yung natago kay Mary. Ang reason nga apalangga niya git si Jesus is because she was so sinful, yet the Lord forgave her. She who is forgiven much, loveth much. Now, ininggin basa ko sa Luke chapter 7, this is about an unnamed sinful woman. Nga hindi siya nga sinful woman, I think you can already guess what she was, no? Hindi ko nalang pag-i-mensionar. Basta yung bal ko lang, nga according to the Bible, she was a sinful woman. Pero ang natabok, she, what is this, anointed the feet of Jesus with perfume, very expensive perfume at that, ha? She wiped it with her tears. Kagrabe dito nga, uh, I mean, the Lord was so moved and impressed by that, nga, basta mo na, she who is forgiven much, loveth much. Wala kita kapilala kung sino ni bali ni me. Pero hambal sa iban, possibly, nga ini si Mary Magdalene. But whatever the truth may be, 
The Bible does tell us in Luke chapter 8 verses 1 to 3 na si Mary Magdalene was a person from whom seven demons came out. It would appear na Jesus cast out seven demons from her. Hindi lang isa, hindi lang duha, pito. There might even be significance to that. Kaya di number seven is a number of perfection mo. So, bottling on, it might mean many demons. Or it might mean seven, hindi na literal na seven. But whatever it is, the point ko, ang point ko, ano ba lang demon spirit? Ano ba lang evil spirit? Hindi ba lang ang clean ni sila pag wicked ni spirits? And you have seven of them? What does that mean? That means, ikaw ay isa katawo nga grabe, ikaw ang, ang kapyot sa imo, ang wickedness, kag ang cleanness. Lain din yung sitwasyon mo, morally and spiritually speaking. But the Lord, out of His grace and mercy and power, He cast out those demons. And no wonder, no wonder, that Mary loved Jesus so much. She who is forgiven much, loveth much. Doon pa yas magkay Paul, di ba? Si Paul, blasphemer, persecutor, pero sanggin patawat siya sa gino, he became a very zealous apostle and servant of Christ. Grabe din ang leksyon. Bisan sa dira. Grabe din ang leksyon na, na makwata mo. Nga pamalandungan din natin ang bugma sa gino para sa ton. If you really want to be a person who loves the Lord, and that is the most important thing of all, the greatest is love. I mean, ariblao, gagan ko lang niya pasis before we close. Ha? Kagto ka sa First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 2. Listen to this, the word of God, my brothers and sisters. If I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, pisa na balaan ko patanan sa Bible sa Christianity. And if I have all faith so that I can move mountains, but do not have love, I am? Ano nga ba sa Bible? I am nothing. Wala pulos. The greatest is love. Faith, hope, and love. The greatest is love. If there is one thing that we should become as Christians, we should become people who love the Lord. In fact, hari pa kita, diri sa dinigani ng verse nini, may verse sa Bible nga nagahambal. If you do not love the Lord, you are cursed. Anasin maka. But sa ngun, if you are a person, bisan ano, ano ka pakalam sa Bible, ha? bisan maayaw ka pa magwali. If you do not love the Lord Jesus, you are not saved. O, basi magambal ka, are you, are you trying to scare us, Brother Dennis? No. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. First, Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 22. If anyone does not love the Lord, a curse be on him. It is so important for us to really love the Lord. Not only as individuals, huh? but as a church. If there is something na dapat makitaan sa church, it's not, you know, hindi ba lang mga successful, nga mga peripherals, nga mga mga ini ba lang mga items nga nagapakita na nga prosperous di ta successful nga church do sa mga important if you were to ask what is important is love that we love the Lord as individuals and as a church basi mamagkot ka why are you saying that brother Dennis oh Revelation chapter 2 verse 1 to 5 oh basahon ko ah Revelation chapter 2 verses 1 to 5 I write to the angel of the church in Ephesus. Thus says the one who holds the seven stars in the right hand and who walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your labor, and your endurance, and that you cannot tolerate evil people. You have tested those who call themselves apostles and are not. In other words, this was a church who really was firm about right doctrine. Okay, kato kita sa verse three. I know that you have persevered and endured hardships. For the sake of my name, and you have not grown weary. Strong in church. This was a church which knew how to endure sufferings. Pero batahan ng verse 4. But I have this against you, humble ni Jesus sa church of Ephesus. In spite of their strength, huh? in spite of the good things that they were doing, the Lord had something against them. 
What did he have against them? You have left your first love. Ano ga yung magkubya ko? Pero hindi parehas dito yas. Saan mo na yung gabaga-baga dito? Pero sobong nagapalay-palay na. Brothers and sisters, this is the most important thing of all as individuals and as a church that we love the Lord Jesus Christ like Mary loved the Lord Jesus Christ so much so that, that she will not let go of Him. Ang muna yung importante, isa pala, basit lang maglawi ko, madigress na naman ko. But, you know, when I look at the churches, sometimes when I listen to the preaching, kung ano-ano mga tupik ko, kung di-ilinga kad ko, and you forget the most important thing of all, love for Jesus. Okay, last. Saan ako ko, Ras? Wala na din kuya kabaguhan, Sister Bird, pag umiyukin nyo lang ko, hindi naging niya, hindi naging niya mabago. Sige na, word of God man niya. Okay, last. How do we become people who really love the Lord? Actually, na simple lang pala. Good lang lang implement. But the directive is very simple. We love Him because He first loved us. In other words, balik man kita giyo kung sa gospel. Kaya di ba na ang gospel? You, you will notice si brother Daryl, ah si Pastor Daryl, amon yung paborito niya man nga film mo. Pagwali siya, it's always about ang punta niya, gospel niya po. Hindi ito siya madulat sa gospel. Bisa na nun niya kawali, lain to, uh, kung ano, bisa na nun niya na tupi ko, galam, sa punta, galambot niya siya niya po, gospel niya po ng palitan. Why? Because it's, because the gospel is about love, the love of Jesus Christ. And if we really understand the love of Jesus for us, the love of God, uh, Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, that is what will motivate us to love. Love Him, love others, love the lost, share the gospel. Everything flows from that. Pwede punto ko mga utok. Everything springs, stems, flows from that. The gospel, the love of God in the good news. Once nga ma-absorb din na natin, nga ma-intindihan din na natin, kag mag-sinkin din sa atin, hearts and minds, then our lives will be transformed just like Mary. Can you imagine Mary? Nagpag-ubla ka buhay niya. She was a woman who had seven demons in her. Unclean spirits, wicked spirits. She might even be that sinful woman nga sa Luke chapter 7. But after that, hambal sa Bible, she was one of the women nga nag-serve kay the Lord kag nagsuporta financially sa iyang ministry. And she is this woman nga nag when she thought that people stole the body of Jesus Christ. Palangga! <laughs> I mean, do you get my point, brothers and sisters? Ang transformation, ang change. Why did she change? How come she was transformed? Because she experienced and understood and really hold on to the truth that Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Love of Jesus, that's everything. And that's how we learn to love Him in return. We love Him because He first loved us. Back to the gospel. Back to the good news that God demonstrated His love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Ang pangumuyo po ginoo para dire sa hamon, dire sa Buena Park, is that we will really become a people who loves you, who loves others, who are zealous to serve you because we really understand and we really have grasped and comprehended your love towards us. Kabay, Panginoon, Kapag umuyo ko sa mga utod ko, and even for myself, kabay pa nga, we will really make that the most important thing in our lives. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.